Hello, Michael here with another Redshift tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at the Redshift Material Blender and how you can use it to layer materials on top of each other uh, when applied to a mesh. So you'll see I've got a jar here with a lid that's been material just with a simple Redshift material um, and the jar itself which has not been materialed. So let's fix that. First thing we're going to do is go to the Hypeshade Editor. Uh, we're going to go down to Redshift and we're going to select Redshift Material Blender. I'll just clear the scene first. And there we go. And so we get something like this and it's not particularly exciting on its own, but we'll select the mesh and then we'll right click and hold and assign material to selection. And at the moment it's not going to look very exciting because there are no materials on it essentially. So we need to fix that. So the way the Material Blender works is if you look on the right hand side here of the attributes, you've got a base material and then layers on top of it. So this works as a hierarchy, so the base material will be at the bottom and then layer 1 will be on top of that and then 2 will be on top of 1 and so forth. So keep that in mind when you're uh, applying new materials to the blender. So our base material, because this is going to be a jar, is going to be glass. So we're going to go to base material color, select the checker box. We're going to go to redshift and select redshift material. Let's move that over there. And we'll make this glass. So we'll turn off the diffuse weight um, and we'll change the index of refraction to 1.3. We'll increase the transmission and refraction to 1.0. So now when we render this, and you'll see that I've just got a light in the scene and a plane uh, underneath, when we render that you get a jar, which is fine, that looks good enough. But if we want to add some materials on top of that, we can just simply go back to the Hypershade Editor and then select our Material Blender again and on layer 1 we're going to do the same thing, we're going to go to Material Color, hit the checker box, go to Redshift and Redshift Material and we'll get a new Redshift Material and it's good that uh, good to name these as you go through so I'm going to call this Glass, I'm going to call this Label and I'm going to make this our label for our jar and before I assign that label I'll just quickly show you what the UVs for my object are so you can see I've got the the design there in the center, this is going to be the sides, um, and those that's my UV layout. If you're creating a label for or something like this where you want to have areas that are uh, transparent, uh, what you're going to want to do is I'm going to obviously turn off the black layer and I'm going to turn off the UV layer, and you want to save this out um, as a file type that has a alpha layer to it. So uh, in this case, I would use a PNG, so you file, save as. Um, change their file type to PNG, I call this jar label 2, save that. So we can use this uh, transparent space as a, an alpha map for transparency and I'll show you how that works. So back in the Hypershade editor, we're going to assign that label now. So we'll go to file, this is under, uh, under our label materials diffuse color. Open up, go to the jar label 2, it's the same as jar label 1, just a copy of the one that we just created. And now if we rendered this there'd be no change. Um, the reason being because our blend color is set to black. So you can think of this as a gain slider until you plug a map into it. So black is basically off and anywhere between black and white will be a percentile. So you can use control it with your value if you wish. So if you want it to be 50% on it would be 0.50. If I close that and render that, you'll see that that is now 50% visible. However, all the space where our label doesn't exist, where it should be alpha mapped, is opaque and we don't want that. So we'll go back into the Hypershade Editor now and with our file node we're going to plug the out alpha into our blend color for that layer. So the blend color is this slider here. So this is essentially what we're going to use to drive our alpha channel. So to do this you'll need to go to blend color, open it up because you're going to need to plug the alpha into the R the G and the B channel for that. Normally you'd expect this to be an alpha but um, in Redshift it is actually an RGB. Um, I'm not sure why that is but it still works the exact same so that's fine. So now when we render you can see that our label is sitting on top of our glass which is exactly what we want. And the Material Blender works exactly like any other materials will function so if you want to add a bump map in for example We'll just make a redshift bump 
we just output our color into the input and the output into the bump input. And then if we re-render that, you can see that we've now got bump just on the areas which aren't, uh, which aren't masked by the alpha channel. So there you go, very straightforward, um, but very powerful material blender function. You can use this for all sorts of things. Uh, I've got a tutorial up already for Redshift on how to make a dusty wine bottle using the same techniques essentially, but you could use it for all sorts of things like decals on cars or architectural things or whatever you like. It's really great for prototyping things if you don't wanna create a single map for a mesh um, and just be able to change certain aspects of it. So if you liked this tutorial make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube and if you haven't already make sure you are subscribed as I'm doing a couple of CG tutorials every week and if you're into that sort of stuff you'll want to stay up to date. Um, if you want to stay up to date better though you could like the Facebook group that's uh, that link is in the description. That's it for now though thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.